Hey friends, welcome back to All in Law. This is a medical video lecture OBGYN. And today I'm going to talk about pelonephritis, pelonephritis. in pregnancy pelonephritis in pregnancy so guys this is really very important topic okay so now I would like to ask you one question why urinary infection is more common in females compared to males why it's more common yes you're right it's because of the three four reasons one is the females have a short urethra because of the short urethra the chances of assigning what you call the infection the bacteria is very easy and hence they develop the infection very soon short urethra the size of the urethra the length of the urethra is nearly four centimeter okay and the second reason is there is a close proximity of external urethral matters to the infected areas like vulva and lower third of vagina okay these areas are really very contaminated heavily by the bacteria when there is a slight infection of these area or a slight accumulation of the bacteria over here they can acid easily and cause infection that's a urinary tract infection soon in females the other reason is sexual intercourse and the other rarity is a catheterization okay so these are the reasons now let's talk about so what are the causes for pelonephritis in what you call in a pregnancy Remember, the pelonephritis is, is very common in primary gravida than multi gravida. Okay. Remember, what happens when there is a there is a physiological changes that takes place during the pregnancy because of the increasing uterus size. These things causes dilatation of the ureter renal pelvis and because of this there is a stasis of the urine in the bladder and the ureter and thus leads to the infection it compresses okay so it leads to the what you call infection this is uterus this is a kidney okay and when the, ch the organisms that are most commonly is E. coli. 75% of the patients will have E. coli. Then Klebsiella pneumoniae, okay, Enterobacter, Proteus, Pseudomonas, Staphylococcus aureus, okay. So there are different types of organisms, right? If a patient has a previous history of urinary tract infection, then chances of getting this pelonephritis in pregnancy is very high, nearly 50%. If the patient has asymptomatic bacteriuria then the chances of having this pelonephritis is 26 to 10, 27 percentage okay and they can be what you call if there is abnormal urine tract urine tract then the patient can have pelonephritis in about 25 percent cases let's talk about the clinical types there are two types one is acute and one is a chronic it all depends on the duration that's it acute and the chronic in acute pelonephritis the onset is acute you know very well and usually appears beyond what you call 16th week beyond the 16th week usually the involvement is bilateral if it's found unilateral it's very common on right side right and what happens these bacteria when they cause the infection they release the toxins 
or cytokines that's IL-1 interleukin-1 TNF tumor necrosis factor and endogenous parogens that's why these patients will have acute severe pain that's a loin pain loin pain that can migrate to that can radiate to groin and a costal vertebral angle tenderness they will have very high fever around 40 degree centigrade and this fever is associated with the chills rigors okay and sometimes they can go into the hypothermia stage hypothermia low body temperature if the core body temperature is less than 35 degrees centigrade then it's known as a hypothermia if you want to call it a severe hypothermia it should be less than 30 degrees centigrade okay and sometimes this patient can have anorexia nausea vomiting and amalgia and sometimes if it progresses it can cause respiratory distress and the pulmonary edema what are the investigations normal investigation the urine culture okay you have to take that and the other investigation you should do along with that is measure the levels of creatinine and the culture studies okay even the culture blood culture also culture studies and this this is pelonephritis in a pregnancy it should be differentiated from other causes like whether the patient is having acute appendicitis okay abruption placenta maybe sometimes can present with these symptoms okay and so fibroid that's a red degeneration of the fibroid okay cholecystitis or she might sometimes she might be in the labor okay and the chorioamnitis very important right now what happens what is the effect of the spelonephritis on pregnancy there may be what you call increased fetal loss due to abrupt, uh, abortion preterm labor intra uterine fetal death abortion preterm labor intra uterine fetal death okay low birth weight prematurity right so how do you manage this what is the management Manage is very important is the fluids start with the fluids very important hydration should be maintained there should be adequate hydration monitor the vitals start with the IV antibiotics antibiotics the most commonly used are cephalosporins aminoglycosides ceftriaxone okay it should be started IV and changed to oral therapy for what you call 7 to 10 days and repeat the urine culture repeat the urine culture after 2 weeks repeat the urine culture after 2 weeks of antimicrobial therapy patient not responding to this therapy need to be evaluated by doing sonogram sonogram or sonography okay for any urine tract obstruction right guys so remember one point I would like to tell you antimicrobial suppression therapy is continued till the end of the pregnancy to prevent the recurrence and the best way to do this is nitroforentine daily at a bedtime is effective okay guys so thank you so much for watching this video take care